Dear veterans, members of the Polish and Canadian community, in the first half of the 20th century, no European capital had a more eventful and tragic history than Warsaw. It was occupied by the German army during the World War I, and its eastern suburbs were ruined during the Bolshevik attacks in 1920. World War II started in Poland with the planet and strictly coordinated by the Germans and Soviets invasion in September 1939. Poland's five weeks struggle against the overwhelming forces ended in defeat and the country being occupied by the Germans and the Soviets. The German Nazi and Soviet occupation was particularly brutal and deadly. Inside occupied Poland, anti-Nazi resistance units were consolidated around the Home Army, Armia Krajowa, and the underground military organization loyal to the Free Polish Government in London, which had the peak in mid-1944, including more than 300,000 soldiers. The Home Army was involved in sabotage, self-defense and retaliation activities against the Germans. It also provided great service to the Allies forces in the area of intelligence, obtaining information on German forces in the East and on the development of the German secret V1 and V2 rockets. The war in Europe was going well for the Allies in late July 1944. After a successful invasion in Normandy, American, British, Polish and the Canadian forces were moving through North France toward Paris. Soviet tanks had reached the eastern suburbs of Warsaw in July 1944. It appeared that Warsaw would be the first island capital to be liberated from the German Nazis. Broadcasts from Warsaw and from Moscow call it on the Polish people to raise up against the Germans. The Battle of Warsaw was about to begin. The primary purpose of the Armia Krajowa was to prepare for the anticipated German military collapse and the liberation of the country. The Home Army Offensive began in the afternoon of August 1st, 1944. The Armia Krajowa had its disposable about 40,000 fighters, including 4,000 women, but no more than 10% of them were armed, mostly with their light weapons. The Germans had roughly the same numbers of soldiers, but they were heavily armed with the tanks, artillery and planes. The uprising lasted nine weeks, the longest and the bloodiest urban insurgency of the Second World War. Despite the initial success in liberating most of the city, from the Germans, the tide soon turned against the Armia Krajowa. The military forces of two sides were disproportionately in favor of the Germans. The uprising, painful and emotional experience was passed over the next generation by the generation that survived the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. Like the story of Eva Konopatsky from Ottawa, a young woman 70 years old at the time, who joined the Polish resistance movement in August 1st, 1944, reflects not only individual experience during the World War II, but more importantly, the whole Polish generation deep desire for freedom and the way we stood up to the humanity life today. The total Polish losses during the uprising include 150,000 civilians, dead and about uh, 20,000 home army casualties. The German forces lost about 10,000 soldiers. Fighting ceased on October 2nd with the formal capitulation of the home army forces. The uprising in 1944 is one of the decisive episodes of the history of Poland and Europe. The deaths and destructions that accompanied it were on the apocalyptic scale, yet for the survivors, for those who had to live throughout the decades of communist operations that follow up Stalin's victory over the Hitler, the uprising was the source of pride and inspiration. The memories of Armia Krajowa, 
and of the uprising of the 63 days of national solidarity, of dignity and freedom, become an important component of the Polish historical consciousness, which helped the nation survive in the difficult years during the Soviet occupation from 1944 until 1989. Indeed, it was his moral legacy of mass wartime resistance that emerged against the Solidarity Movement of the 1980s and contributed to the collapse of the Soviet system. The spirit of uprising helped us to open new chapter for Poland and the rest of the Central European countries to join NATO and EU. The Warsaw Uprising in 1944 is unique in the history of humankind. The high political cynicism displayed by the great powers in devastating when they set against the idealism of the young Polish resistance fighters during the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. The courage of the fighters remain a defining memory of the Polish image of itself as a nation willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for freedom and justice. After more than 70 years from the tragic and heroic moment, these are the real heroes, stories and values we need today, particularly for young generation in Poland, in Europe, in Canada and all over the world. Thank you. Dear veterans, Canadian and Polish friends, Commemorating the 76th anniversary of Warsaw Uprising, we cannot forget about an extremely important piece of the history, which is the Canadian airmen help provided to Warsaw insurgents. However, the facts are still largely unknown in both our countries. Between August and September 1944, hundreds of airmen from Allied Air Forces representing Great Britain USA, Australia, South Africa and Canada conducted a total of 280 airdrops with help for the Warsaw insurgents, providing a total of more than 200 tons of supplies like weapon, ammunition, food and sanitary materials. The heroic aviators carried out extremely dangerous missions, exposing themselves to a deadly threat. The pilots had to overcome more than 2,000 kilometers from Italy through Yugoslavia, Hungary, Czechoslovakia to Warsaw and back. There were no possibilities for stopovers because Stalin did not allow using Soviet-controlled airports. In these dangerous actions, 147 airmen from different countries and air forces were killed, including 26 Canadians. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the examples of spectacular Canadian pilot sacrifice is the story of Halifax type bomber from 148 Royal Air Force Squadron, which took of its last flight on 3rd August 1944, carried supplies for Polish uprisings in Warsaw. The aircraft was shot down by German fighter over Dombrovata, Moscow, in southern Poland. The Canadian crew and its captain, Erdogan Blin, died in this catastrophe. The wreck crashed into the ground for more than 60 years. The pilots and the plane's remains were found in November 2006. Finally, Canadian airmen were buried with honors in Rakowiecki Cemetery in Krakow, and the remains of the planes and personal belongings found on the place of the tragedy are now in the Warsaw Uprising Museum. We, we can recall other 26 fallen heroic Canadian airmen, such as Captain George McRoy, who was shot down over Warsaw on August 14, 1944. In 1964, Polish community in Canada commemorated the bravery and sacrifice of the Canadian airmen Founded a memorial in Ottawa Confederation Park honors Canadian airmen who fall over Poland while flying support mission during the Second World War. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The story about Canadian support provided to insurgents and in Warsaw is one of the many examples of Polish and Canadian brotherhood in arms in the past and today. These facts prove that Poland was not alone during the Second World War and highlight that Poland is not alone now. Glory and honor to heroes of the Warsaw Uprising and brave allied forces earned.